All right, so now I'm going to show you how to do a cost sheet in Bright. So I'm logged into Bright and you are going to have to pull up a property that is for sale. I'm going to go ahead and use one of my pending listings. When you open up the listing, you'll see a B with a dollar sign and an S with a dollar sign. The S is for a seller cost sheet and the B is for a buyer closing cost sheet. In this example, we're representing a buyer. And you can see that when you do this from the MLS sheet, it actually auto fills most of this cost sheet for you with the tax information pulled right from the MLS, as well as sale price. You can of course change this to whatever your buyer is offering. Um, in our case, we were offering 250,000 closing on June 11th. Um, the tax automatically pulled. We're saying that we got a really great interest rate at, I think it was actually in our example, 2.75 no seller help. I go ahead and add this information in, even though you don't have to, but I like that identifying info to pull up. Earnest deposit, 2,500. We chose a conventional loan with 10% down. And you can see it automatically pulls in your mortgage amount. Now just keep in mind that all lender fees are lender specific. Um, so if you have a cost sheet from your lender, you can pull that information right off of their cost sheet, which I highly recommend you doing. But if you don't have it, these are some numbers that I use to kind of keep me on the safe side. I let my buyers know that without the lender cost sheet, I do err on the side of caution and tend to inflate my prices a little bit because I would much rather tell them that they have to pay $10,000 in closing costs and then they're pleasantly surprised when it's only 8,000 versus saying, hey, you only have to pay 5,000 in closing costs. Oh, never mind, it is 8,000, right? It's much better to overestimate than to under. I leave um, the title fees as is. On the right-hand side, you have transfer tax, deed recording, mortgage recording. These are pretty safe, give or take. Notary commission paid by buyer would be if you have a broker fee. So if you have a transaction coordinator, then you pay $400. Um, plus we have, you know, the KW broker fee, I would maybe charge 550 here for your broker fee, you do have to have that on your buyer agency to be able to charge. I always change homeowners insurance to unpaid because they pay that at the closing table. And then you can put in whatever inspections they're electing here. Those are prepaid because they're due at the time of inspection. You'll see that they auto calculate buyer reimbursements for taxes here as well. For a quick glance on the right hand side, you can see what your buyer's monthly payment's going to be, how much cash they need to purchase. You can save this so that way if you are negotiating, you can just pull this back up and quickly change only the couple items that you need to, such as sales price. But for this instance, we're gonna go ahead and print to a PDF so that way you can add to your DocuSign room and send for signature, just like you did with those other flat PDF documents like the utility sheet and seller disclosure. So that is how you do a buyer's cost sheet. Go ahead and just take a peek at my numbers here so you have a general rule of thumb, but I do highly recommend getting a cost sheet from the lender you're working with so that way your numbers are as close as possible to your lender. If you have more questions on what all these costs are, definitely give your lender a call. Um, a good lender is more than willing to sit with you for 15 minutes to 30 minutes and go over cost sheets because they want to make sure that you are portraying the same information that they are as well.